The writers at Cosmopolitan Magazine wanted to see if Justin Wayne's pickup videos were real, so they decided to send one of their lead directors, David Ingber, to find out for himself. After Justin demonstrated just how easy it can be to make out with women in public, Cosmo invited him to their show, Cosmo Live. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Hashtag Cosmo Live, where we invite you, our audience, to join us, the editors, uh, to pitch story ideas. I'm Amy O'Dell. I'm the editor of Cosmopolitan.com. I am here with my usual crew. Cosmo. And we have a special guest, Justin Wayne, here to help us with our theme today, which is how to please a woman. So we're going to be talking about story ideas relating to how to please women. And you are a, I was calling you a pickup artist, but you're telling me you want to be called a dating coach. <laughs> yeah. Are these uh, the same thing? Um, well, pickup artist, uh, you know, it's more of an old school terminology. It sounds almost like From the like old what era? 80s. You remember the 80s movie called The Pickup Artist with uh, Robert Downey Jr.? You should check it out. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, so it's one of those kind of cheesy 80 type of uh, slangs that came out before. So I prefer to go by dating coach because uh, it's more broad than just teaching guys. It's also teaching women as well. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, dating coach it is. Wait, what do but, you teach people? Yeah, women don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they actually need a lot more help than it seems. Um, what? Yeah, it seems, yeah, of course. Uh, but I, I do focus a lot of uh, more on men at this moment. But I've been some. I've been getting calls from women as well. So I have female clients as well. So you take guys out on the street. Yeah, so in New York City. No, but uh, this is what you do. On the street? You profile do. You. you take guys out yeah. to like a fountain, and you say, go up to that chick and ask her about her scarf. Oh, wow. She's not wearing a scarf. And then she'll be like, but I'm not wearing a scarf. And that's like an entryway into a conversation. Yeah, I mean, that's just right? yeah, that's just one out of a million you different shocked. things you could you do. I am, well, no, I didn't get a chance to read it. But, um... You don't just, it's not like at a bar or something? I'm picturing swingers is honestly more like what I'm picturing. <laughs> Well, I mean, I teach... Which would make you early era Vince Vaughn, so you should be complimented. Awesome. Better than late era Vince Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. Vince Vaughn, although that's not saying... I'm, a little, I'm sort of fond of puffy Vince Vaughn. Let's, we should move on. <laughs> well, as he's your type. <laughs> let's flip that. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be professional type. now. Yeah. So, but wait, I'm a half shirtless man sitting <laughs> <laughs> That's true. FYI. Um, so wait, I have a real yeah. question about this, yeah. because yeah. I feel like... Back in the day, however many years ago, I feel like we all read the game, like this whole idea of pickup artists and all of their moves, and you get on to things. Like now every woman knows if a guy is nagging her in a bar or doing the thing where you say something that's like a little bit of a jab to supposedly like bring down her self-esteem. Isn't that true with a lot of these things that you're teaching people? If you're giving every guy the same set of tools, don't women, like aren't we smart enough to realize what's going on? That's a really good question. Um, there's still the old saying, right, that attraction is not a choice. So no matter what, right, women will still want to date men. True. Right, number one. Also, um, before in the past, they would teach the same personality. So there was this one guy that would teach the same personality where we teach more fundamental things that would uh, attract the woman. So if it's not aligned, it's something else. So it's not just... Like uh, what? How, what are ways to please a woman? Give me a list. I was going to do a list of ways to please a woman by you. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I think it starts more for more from the idea of attraction. Because the more attractive someone is, the more you know everything you do will be good. So if so I'm into like someone, so like DJ, is that the tip? I, <laughs> I mean, so for example, if I'm in, if I'm interested in a girl, no matter whatever she does, I will appreciate it. So if she calls me five times, I might be like, yeah, she's calling me. Whereas if someone I don't want to call me, they call me twice, I might feel like, ugh. So basically, you can do anything you want as long as you're Kate Upton. That's, <laughs> that's just helpful uh, information. Right. Something like that. Yeah. So it's the bottom idea. No, but what are the things though? Like, give me a list of like, if I were a guy and I was like, I can't meet women. Yeah. Please help me. What would you tell me to do? Well, well the first thing I, I tell you to do is uh, just to go out and play what you call the numbers game. Okay. Uh, this is just great for guys getting a lot more numb to uh, you know social awkwardness, the pretend, uh, being afraid of being rejected. And once you get used to that, um, it opens up a lot of doors. How do you get over that, though? By approaching lots of women. And what do you say? Okay, well, you know, again, um, you can say anything. There's three different... No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now. I'll, well, we teach three different ways of starting conversations. Um, you know, there's there's a direct, there's indirect, and there's a friendly opening, right? Friendly conversation starters. So direct basically means, you know, like telling a girl that you're, you're sexually attracted in some way, 
whether it's, um, I think you're cute, had to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of like really confident type of stereotype guys would do that, like, uh, yeah, I saw you over there, I want to meet you. Um, then there's indirect, which is more um, an excuse to start a conversation. Um, like making up a scarf that she's not wearing. Yeah, well, that's more friendly, playful. Like, a girl could tell, like, you know, I'm full of shit when I say that. She, mm -hmm. she, you know, it kind of welcomes her to, you know, flirting competition or whatever. Mm -hmm. But indirect is more like, do you know where uh, Jamba Juice is, for example? You know, oh, okay. And, you know, you kind of use directions, that angle. places. Yes, and the last one is what you call uh, friendly conversation starters. These are probably my favorite because they're a lot more natural. Like when you go to a bar, um, anything that's um, you're approaching them as a person, but you're not, you're not like hiding it, or you're not going to, uh, sexually direct either. So it might be like a, you could, and it's very uh, asexual. Mm -hmm. So I could be like a, you know, I, I like your shirt or you know, cool hat or whatever to get it from or. Something like that, you know, cool microphone, whatever. So I'm approaching cool you. Cool microphone. <laughs> yeah, I, I get like that, that a right? lot. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or, well, you know, anything like that, that that shows interest in the person, but not necessarily as a sexual object. Um, and that's that generally is the three ways. And we do something called what the test. What does that say about how we treat CJ? Alex, <laughs> Alex, you look intrigued. I am. Like, I think this is fascinating. Like, I have ne never, like, done any of this stuff, so it's so <laughs> interesting. Like. What is the success rate? Like, would you find if you go up to a girl randomly and you're like, how is your, like, I like your scarf, and she's not wearing a scarf. I feel like if somebody said that to me, I'd be like, you're a crazy person. I'm not wearing a scarf. <laughs> yeah, and then that's what it would be to Okay, so, <laughs> well, there's something called so, the tester, right, that I, that I created, that I introduced right. to the dating community, which is basically a way to determine, um, you know, her current level of receptiveness, which could be for... Tons of reasons. She could have to use a bathroom, so she's not in a good mood. She could be meeting a boyfriend in the corner. She doesn't have to use the bathroom. <laughs> you never know, right? The point is that, like, you know, that would that would uh, affect her receptivity. So let's say if I say, "Excuse me," is a test, for example. Excuse me. From there, I can tell from the way she looks at me whether I should go direct, indirect, or friendly. Well, how, so if well, she seems flirty, right? Tell? So she seems. So I'm just saying, if she seems like um, she's is open. This flirting or? Well, if she seems like she's open for a fun conversation, doesn't necessarily mean she's. Interested in me yet? But so she could be open to anything. Well, just just the conversation. I mean, like conversation introductions. Yes. Yes. I have a question. What are like, in your opinion? I think you guys should tweet how to treat a woman. Hashtag how to treat a woman. Yeah. And from how a profession, how, how, how to please a woman. <laughs> how, how to treat, treat how to please. Hey, if you can get. Oh, stick out. Anyways, the five the five biggest like uh, things a man can do that will make them attractive to a woman, and from a professional's okay opinion. Uh, the first thing that we we speak about is. Fashion, right? Because that's the easiest thing you can make a difference with. Um, the, the easiest thing you can, you guys can do is go to a fashion uh, stylist expert, someone whose uh, you know profession is to dress you up. That that would save a lot of time, but not everyone has an artistic eye. So upgrade um, your style. Yeah, because yeah, um, upgrade your style. <laughs> um, also, as I said before, I'm taking notes. So. <laughs> yeah, as, um, as I said before too. Um, you know, go out there and play the numbers game. Meaning, there has, has to be a period where every guy goes out there, goes to bars or you know places that are socially acceptable to hit on women. Because women like being like engaged with, I guess. Well, sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. Okay. Uh, depending on the way the guy did it. So and engage women, up to, upgrade your fashion. Yeah. Another thing, uh, you know, <laughs> top guys, three, I guess. Top three. <laughs> <laughs> top three. Um, also, um, you know, I, I, I like talking about this a lot too. Um, transparency. Uh, to a certain point, like I think a lot of times, um, honesty in terms of the you know, way you come across to the girl, like uh, when you come across a certain level of um, transparency, does help. Um, so like honesty, kind of. Especially right. when when a guy is not trying to be that serious yet. Okay. Um, that really makes a difference. Um, there's so, so much, there's so much different avenues to this. So What's the difference avenues. between looking good and looking bad? I mean, for a man. Like, how do you explain yeah. that to a man? Okay. Um, well. We focus a lot more on personality enhancement, right? We do focus on looks as well, right? Uh, but we focus a lot more on personality because that will make that can make a man look good. So if I'm like this, versus if I'm like this, it makes a difference, right? <laughs> Simple things like that. So we teach like body language uh, exercise. Like uh, we always tell guys, generally speaking, um, you know, you want to keep your neck up because it exposes, it shows that you're confident with sub communications, stuff like that makes a difference. Versus if he's like this, you know, very scared or you know, vocal projection, speaking loud so people can hear you. So if you talk to soft, it may sound like timid. <laughs> and not right? manly. Yeah. Just, uh, let's say if a guy's short, also, we, we uh, encourage him to sometimes get what you call tall man shoes. Um, <laughs> heels. Just, especially when he goes out. Yeah, because girls are wearing heels, too, to equalize the game a little bit. Also, wear heels. Um, and, equalize the game. And, you know, and also personality. Have a big personality, like, you know, like Joe Pesci, you know, short people. 
that fight hard. You know? um, so, you know, little quick little pointers, but there's so much pointers. So. Frank, are you learning a lot? You're a single guy. Um, well, not really anymore, but... Uh, oh, well, okay. Oh, no. um, no. Let me yeah. take Wait, my classes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he acted like Joe Pesci. That's what happened. Yeah. I acted like, just like Joe Pesci, but I was... <laughs> I did. Um, <laughs> did you call her your girlfriend? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. You didn't tell us. I'm sorry. I, all right, next time I'll send out. Like, in my in my next Alex weekly in my next weekly bulletin, <laughs> I'll send out an email. We do a share every but, morning. Where were you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, serious question though. I mean, do you feel like there's certain types of girls that don't want to be approached at bars? Like, how do you deal with? Okay. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really what. good question, and um, you know, I, I have a lot of examples on YouTube with like me approaching girls in real life without uh, they don't know not. Unsuspecting women, and sometimes we get we have three categories. Wait, uh, you like creeper film women? <laughs> <laughs> we blur their faces out, but yeah, right. Uh, so that is oh, fascinating, good. weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Because what happens is that people want to know what works for real. They don't want to. I mean, I, the way I started off doing this is where I got my popularity. You know, we have a, a video with like over like a million views already. Uh, it's called "Stranger Kisses Three Women in the Mall," right? Can where, you tweet that out so people yeah, can see it? Stranger yeah. Kisses Three Women in the Mall, where um, yeah. I go to the mall and you know kiss three girls and. Did they get a row? Like on the lips? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Like out of nowhere? Wait, no, what's your... There was a struggle. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't just like... I'm no, no. Right? Is this just three for three? Or? Yeah, yeah. Three for three, right? It was a record, basically, right? That's... Are you impressed? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, yeah, is it right there? Right the mall right over there. Time one and mall. Um, wow. Yeah, this scale, scale too, scale. yeah. I'm no thinking. Fancy women. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the bottom line is that like there's three types of women that we usually encounter. We talk about there's like the no girls, the maybe girls, and yes girls. And it, it's all, it's okay, all yeah. characterize all of us. Yeah, it's yeah. all in the moment. Okay? Okay. It's all it's all in the moment, right? So you could be a no girl right now, but yes girl tomorrow, or maybe girl in five minutes. Like depends on how you feel, uh, okay. what you're going through, the mode you're in. You know, um, you know, let's say, for example, if you're late to work and someone's better to stop you, it'd be a lot more difficult for them to get to know you versus yeah. if uh, you're in a bar chilling out having a good time, right? It changes mm. the, the playing field. It's all about disposition. Um, so, you know, no girls are girls basically that, you know, no matter what you do, it's pretty much not, you know, not going to happen, even if you have great skills. Uh, quote unquote masters sometimes can turn it around, but it's not going to happen. Masters? Masters. <laughs> Like yourself? Like I'm high not, priests. That's yeah. what people have said. I've the said high priests of dating. Right, but guys who have like a high consistency rates versus like the typical guy that goes out there. Um, also, there's the, the maybe girls, which are girls that... Uh, yeah, but what is a master? Oh, a master? A master is a basically... It's an elusive term, but we basically call it a guy who's very consistent. And a player. Is this yeah. the actual like, the legit pickup artist, like the game guys? <laughs> this is actually probably a little more legit because we, we show you know proof. We you know there's, there's like people who want to see videos. Is it mystery? No, I've, I've met him before. Nice guy. Actually. What's he like? Does um, he wear that much makeup in real life? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Right. You know he's a nice guy. He's a cool guy. You know he's doing his thing right now. Um, <laughs> yes, you he know. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mystery. But, the pickup artist, oh. the actual not he's not a dating coach. He's like he's he's the pickup artist. He's like the one who's mystery? like break them down and then build them up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Is he okay. a dating master, Anna? I mean that's subjective. I think. Do I have to wear he thinks of himself as a dating master. No, you okay. should just. Date. But he's not dating. He's just picking you are, on. You're <laughs> just the way you are. Oh, wow, I feel like it's a song. Interesting. I like what you said there, I'll right? I'll later. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. Dating versus picking on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, so, so pickup, yeah, like mystery. He's a teach pickup, and you know, I'm into that as well. A lot of guys need to have, have to first get to know the girl, and then eventually date them. So those are two like, separate fields, okay? So the same, the, the, the social dynamics, the social physics that apply in meeting a woman is not the same as relationships. Um, so you know, if I have to be a little bit of a jerk or whatever, neg you or whatever people call it in the beginning, it'd be a lot more playful. At some point, that has to come off, and I have to get to know you and. Understand, you know, what your life is about. You know, what your what your needs or your desires are, and see if we can make a good compromise to um, make each other happy. Do you teach men how to communicate and make plans? I feel like that's an issue for sure. It's an issue with everybody. You mean uh, in terms? I feel of, like the man uh, you marry is the man that can make a date. <laughs> <laughs> but can you? So can, you're telling me that? Like, uh, hey, how's it uh, going? I'm great. How are you? Do you want to go for dinner tomorrow at seven at this place? Great. Yes. Right. No one can do that. No Except one can do that. Okay. The man I'm marrying can do that. Yes. Okay. So you, you're saying that? Jay, are you saying that, 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 are, that men are not friends. like reliable these days to want to come out? It's not even reliability. It's more just like 
dragging on and sort of just wait, you know, nothing. And then eventually they're like, well, I mean, I I guess, like, next week if you want to, like, do something, there's, like, you could go to that restaurant or this restaurant or another restaurant or if you don't want to do anything or if you don't want to go to dinner. <laughs> or if you don't want to, like, it's just exactly. endless and it's just sort of, like, you're like, okay, and it's like place. the girl is always the one who goes on the oh, yes. restaurant That's reviews, terrible. and the girl is always yeah. the one who yeah, picks the restaurant. Annoying. Yeah, we, we, I literally yeah. send someone Sorry. a menu yesterday. I sent <laughs> some. I texted a menu to somebody. To someone you're dating? Yeah. Are they watching this? I, hope I do not. not have time for that. Let me just. Say. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, I think women like the 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 man being a man. I think that's something a dating coach or a master would probably explain is women are different than men. It's easy to, be, easy to get comfortable in your own thing, but in order to play in the women's realm, you need to think differently and act differently. Yeah, I, I'm natural, even my natural inclination, um, you know, my girlfriends are over there, by the way, even you know, in our relationship. She is. Where yeah, is she? She's over there somewhere. Totally. She's, she's, <laughs> she's going out, hanging out. She's out. Yeah. She's yeah. crazy yeah. in the field. Hey, girlfriend. Anyway. <laughs> well, basically, like, Wait, you did know. you pick her up, or is that random? I mean, you could call it pick up. Okay. You can call Do it. Do you say, I like your scarf? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> that would no. amazing. I know. <laughs> I mean, she's been very patient with me, so I appreciate that. What are people on Twitter <laughs> saying, Lisa? Um, people on Twitter are saying that you're, like, a real-life hitch. Yeah. Do you get that a lot? You guys yeah, a lot. Movie. I mean, yeah, I've helped a lot of people, and uh, sometimes it, you know, warms my heart to when guys call me and told me I changed their lives and helped them transform oh, from a nice. guy who wasn't initially attractive or had issues beating women at certain point in their lives, and uh, it makes me feel happy. Um, somebody, Taylor McPherson, asked about the numbers game, but you kind of explained that. Just the idea of going out and getting as many numbers as you can is a confidence building exercise. It's a confidence building it's a exercise. Practice. Yes. One thing I wanted to kind of quickly just say that there's basically two general approaches that we teach, both three. There's online dating, which is really uh, steadily growing right now, right? Um, there's social circles, like that's like the typical place where people, 99% of people formulate successful relationships through social circle, because women are genetically designed to uh, want to, um, you know, date a guy in their tribe. And then there's stranger approaching, which is Can what I... Can you I'm, elaborate? What? Well, Can you be more specific? On social circle. Yeah. I think you made <laughs> all that stat <laughs> about 99%. <laughs> well, well, okay, well... Most people, you know, meet through friends, right? Mm -hmm. Meet through work, meet through a friend of a friend. Most of the time, in terms of like a lot of successful relationships, meet through that, meet that way. Versus uh, what I teach, also called stranger approach. The so stranger approach, basically, the odds are a lot lower. Uh, it's a lot more difficult because you have like basically a, a limited time window to really create a, a strong, lasting impression that goes somewhere. The so stranger approach is um, what I teach specifically because of the wide amount of options that are there. So. A lot of the issue, a lot of people um, end up getting relationships with people they don't necessarily want to be with because um, they mostly look in the social circle for options, but a lot of times it's limited, you know, and... So we need to be looking for random? No, I'm saying you should be more open to it, receptive to it, especially in a busy city, and, yeah. What are some things that you see that have been effective for, like, women when they want to try to please their man? I mean, the most, like, important things, I guess, on the field or in a lasting relationship or whatever. Okay, well... You know, um, it depends on the personality type. I mean, yeah. some guys are, I mean, a lot of guys, we live in a generation of uh, lots of beta males, right? Meaning that women have to take lead and tell them what to do and say this, say that, and drag them everywhere. Um, and, and that could be a problem simply because, you know, women can get bored of it sometimes and they can feel like they're doing all the work. And, and then they become more masculine, you know, a little bit more of a masculine presence these days. I know a lot of, um, you know, women these days. No offense to women. What all. does that mean? I mean, like, okay, let's say if a woman is doing all the, okay, let's, let's go out this place, or let's do this, or, uh, you know, they're always calling the shots. Like, it puts them more in that kind of leading role. And uh, that's I feel like that's office. something that lazy men say. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, oh, yeah. the woman is being too masculine. She's taking charge of the relationship. It's like, well, you know what you could do? Make a plan for once in your oh, life. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So I just think that's your fault. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Beta guys, you know, they, it, it's like a cycle, right? The guy's beta, then it triggers the girls that have to, okay, let's, let me be, let me wear the pants relationship, and right. vice versa. Let's so say. you're saying that could benefit um, a woman if she did that? And oh, yeah. Man? Because, first of all, she, okay. her experiences will be a lot more enjoyable, number one. Uh, but I, I, I was just saying that... Um, if someone really likes yeah. making decisions, though. So. Yeah, so you just know yeah. that you always have the best decision? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, I mean, whatever works, right? I mean, that's the bottom line I always tell people is that it's always about what gets you results at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. Like, forget about ideals. It's all, it's all about the bottom line figures. If you notice something works, even if it seems uh, unconventional, you know, it works. You know? Well, some of our readers are saying on Twitter, 
Emma Elise is pointing out the numbers game is kind of disappointing because then you end up with a lot of women out there on the street, a lot of strangers who aren't getting phone calls. And um, Taylor <laughs> McPherson is asking again, like, what are signs that a guy is into you for real? Because I get that you're trying to help men meet as many women, pick up as many women as possible. But for women, we want to know if somebody's hitting on us for real, not just because he's fulfilling his numbers game quota. Okay, so the whole purpose of a guy practicing um, his game, his social skills, is to meet women that he is attracted to. Sure. And obviously, attraction is generally the first phase in this type of, especially in strange approach settings. Attraction, a guy's going to see a girl he's attracted to, he approaches her. Sure, does he like her, like her? He doesn't know yet. You know, I mean, he, he likes her based on what he can see, the superficial at, the, at this moment. But hopefully at some point... But I do you know. think it's disappointing to a woman if somebody is actually literally stopping you on the street, talking to you for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and asking for your phone number, and then you never hear from them again. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, first of all... It, <laughs> nope, she'd be thinking it about insane. it like, all night. Like, yeah. Guys yeah. yeah. yeah like, you went out of your way to approach me on the street <laughs> and ask for my number because I'm such a confident hottie, and then I never hear from you. Okay, this is the thing that a lot of people are wrong, okay? In <laughs> reality, right. Right. Confident body. Okay. So <laughs> Here's the true Hashtag statistics, though, right? Uh, based on, like, I've coached thousands of guys, okay? I even coached, wow. uh, you know, guys along uh, his roommate, uh, one of his old roommates, right? So I've coached guys before. You coached CJ's roommate? No, no guys with him. alongside You know him, Amy. You interviewed him. Right. Chris Luna. Chris Luna, yeah. Okay. So the, the bottom line is that, like, most of the times... <laughs> That's not the I issue. Didn't know that oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, most times guys have a shoulder. Whatever. <laughs> most times guys are the ones who end up getting a lot of phone numbers and what you call getting flaked. So they would see a girl on the street. I'm sure you guys have done it before. You know, mm -hmm. you're being polite. You know, he he asks for his number. You're like, okay, here's my number. But then you no, go home. No, not in New York City. You think about it. You say fuck off to everybody that comes up to you. <laughs> New York City. I mean, but you know, I mean, a lot of girls actually would, you know, t talk the conversation, but they know deep in their mind that they might not go further, so they might just give him his number to get to get rid of him. Okay. Yeah, but not everyone wants to do a confrontation. But then right? he has your phone number. Well, yeah, you, know, either way, you, know, you just don't. You just don't respond. You know, like most times after a girl doesn't respond, I mean, after two times, most people. Well, then you get off. the like every Thursday night for the next like month, you get like the what's up at like ten at night, and then you just you just have an endless list of just like what's up for like five months. You just you like you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah. So you you give that your number a bunch of times, right? Well, it also depends if I'm drunk. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, right? But the point is that everything feels a little bit more like magic. You know. Alcohol. <laughs> right. Maybe if I kiss this frog, he'll turn into Maybe a frog. if I just give this frog my nose. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. you good. We learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, we learned so much. I'll let you go pick up your girlfriend. We need to. One, two, three, four. Yeah.